Hi everybody and welcome to my underwater watercolour painting workshop. This workshop is going to be split into two different parts and in the first part we are going to be learning a couple of different watercolour painting techniques that we will use to fill up our piece of paper. In the second part of this workshop we are going to be drawing beautiful underwater animals on our watercolour painting which we will then cut out and stick in our bathroom to give it some life and to create our very own at home aquarium. For the first part of this workshop you will need some newspaper, a paintbrush, some paper to paint on, some watercolour paints, a jar full of water and you will need some salt and a straw to learn the special techniques. For this technique, you will need some newspaper to protect your work area. You will also need some watercolour paper, cartridge paper, or if you don't have either of these, any kind of paper will work perfectly. You will need some watercolour paints, You will also need some paint brushes. I like to have a bigger size and a smaller size. You'll also need a jar of water. I have some toilet paper to soak up any extra paint. And I also have some table salt, which I'm using for this particular technique. Let's begin. So to start with, you'll need to activate your watercolours. To do this, you'll need to add water. It's important to add a lot of water so the paint isn't too dark. When using watercolours, we should always start lighter and gradually make our colours darker. I like to start with a lot of water and quite a light and watery layer. As I work, I add darker colours and I mix them on the paper. With watercolours, it is easy to make your artwork darker as you go, whereas it is quite hard to make your colours lighter. Watercolours are very beautiful because you can get a very translucent effect by mixing the colours with the water. As you blend them, you can see the colours run into each other. I am just slowly filling out my paper with different shades of blues and purples. These colours remind me of the ocean. Watercolour is fun because you can be quite messy as you paint. You can mix the colours on the paper and you can just blend them with a bit of water. Because we will be using salt, and I'll show you how that works in a little bit, we want our paper to actually be quite wet. That kind of glistening, shiny surface you can see is from my light reflecting on all the water on the paper. At this point, you don't have to worry too much about your painting being really neat. I just want you to focus on filling up your page with really beautiful colours and blending them nicely using the water. Once we've filled up our paper with colour, you can experiment a little bit with blending different colours into the, um, into the colour you already have. I'm just splotching out some different watercolour here and then adding water on top of it to blend it in even more. Once you're happy with your colours on the paper, I would like you to get your salt. Pour a little bit into your hand. We are going to sprinkle the salt over our watercolour painting. 
This creates a really beautiful effect, beautiful effect where the salt crystals soak up some of the water and paint and crystallize on top of the paper's surface. The more water you have, the more effective your salt will be on top of the watercolors. You can be very liberal with your salt, sprinkling a lot of it on, and watch as the little salt crystals soak up the water and form kind of little crystal-like structures on top of the paper. When you've sprinkled enough salt, your paper should be far more dry because the salt crystals will have soaked up a lot of the water. Once you're happy with how much salt you've sprinkled on your painting and must, most of the water has been soaked up, you can put your painting in the sun to dry. While we wait for our salt watercolour painting to dry, let's learn a new technique. For this technique, you will need a straw. I just found an old straw I had lying around in the cupboard. To begin with, we will get our paper and our watercolours, and like we did with our salt drawing, we will mix the water with our colours to activate them. For this painting, I am going to use some different colours. I have the same materials I used for my last painting, but I've added a couple of straws. For this painting, I am going to try and replicate coral. Coral is found in the ocean, usually on the floor and in rocks. Corals are actually animals, and they're made up of hundreds to thousands of tiny coral creatures which are called polyps. They are very beautiful and often very colourful. I will be mixing my colours using oranges and yellows and a lot of water. Similarly to how I did my salt picture, I want a lot of water on them. I'm going to take a straw to my mouth and blow on the puddle of water so that the paint slowly spreads itself out across the paper. This may be a bit difficult, but you can move the paper around until you get an angle that works for you. Generally, the more paint you have on the paper, the easier it will, to, the easier it will be to blow around. As I move across my paper, I am going to get different colors so that my coral-like painting is made up of different, um, different colours. The colours will blend with the water. I'm going to slowly work in segments. As I put the water down, I shall make sure it's pulled up on the edge. Once I have a good pull, I will take my straw, put it to my mouth, and gently blow on the paint to blow it across the paper. You can actually mix different colours on the paper by blowing the different coloured paints towards each other. You want to make sure that your straw is a few inches away from the paper so that you're not blowing directly onto the paint. I want to make sure that my watercolour paint have a lot of water in them, otherwise they will be too dry and too thick to blow across the paper.
the more you blow, the more you get smaller and more intricate lines that fill up your paper. You could keep going and layering over and over, blending different colors together to make your coral really look alive and colorful. If you're having some difficulty getting the paint to run, just try a different angle or try adding a little bit more water and paint to the paper. You can blow from different angles. Once you have filled up most of your paper, you can go back to the other side and layer more colours on top of the other colours. Remember how I said before, we should always mix watercolours from light and get darker as we go. You can almost think about it like a collage, layering colours upon colours and slowly bringing your artwork to life. When you're happy with your coral painting, you can put it aside to dry. Let's check on our salt watercolour and see if it's ready for the next step. If you touch the paper and it feels dry to the touch, like all of the water has been soaked into the salt, you can now brush off all of the salt crystals that are on the surface of the paper. You can just use your hands to gently rub on the paper until most of the salt comes off. Some of it will be stuck on the paper and held by the watercolours, but that doesn't really matter. Once you have rubbed out as much salt as you can and you're happy with your work, you can put it aside. You have learnt the salt technique. Next week we will be drawing and cutting out beautiful underwater animals from this piece of paper. In the meantime, you can paint another piece like this in preparation for the next workshop. We can now check on our coral drawing that we did with the straw technique. If the paint is dry, we can now add the more layers to our coral drawing. Adding more layers with different colours will help to add a sense of depth to your image. I am going to layer mine up using some purples and some darker colours to try and make my image look less 2D. Using the same technique as we did before and wetting the paints as they might have dried out, we will add a small pool to the edge of the paper and use our straw to gently blow it across. We can keep doing this until we are happy with the colours and how much detail we have on the paper. Once you are happy with this coral painting, you can put it aside to dry in preparation for the next part of this activity, and while you wait, you can make some more straw paintings. You should now have two beautiful watercolour paintings. Next week, we will be drawing underwater animals onto our watercolour paintings and cutting them out. We will then be sticking them around our bathroom to brighten it up and give it some life. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next part of the tutorial.